Hello, this is Jane. Hello, Liu Ma. Hello, I'm Yezi. Hello, I'm Ben. Hello, I'm Daishi. Hello, I'm Olivia. Hello, I'm Tina. 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 Ichi Da Sheng Shuo, Yi Shou Let It Show. Today's program is produced by Yi Shou University Office of International and Cross Strait Affairs, and today I'm your host Mary.、Uh, today we are going to talk about a special topic. Today、um, I was the host for the very first episode of this radio program, and now I am the host for this very last broadcast. So it has really come full circle. It's been about exactly a year since we started this program. And we have had many amazing guests from all over the world, and we have heard their stories. Just to name a few of those、uh, diverse experiences, we've had students from Fiji and talk about how exactly they arrived in Taiwan.、Um, I know we've had a guest from Japan and talked about his experience here in Taiwan, as well as different New Year celebrations.、Uh, we've also had a guest from the Philippines, and they told us about their experience here in Taiwan with the Dragon Boat Festival. And that's just a few of the many topics we've had. So it really shows the diverse、uh, students that we have here at Isho, and it's been an amazing run. And to end the special year, our topic today will focus on the great school organization that has allowed us to produce this program for our listeners, and that would be ISU ISU, the representatives of the school. Uh, today's guests are present and former members of ISU ISU, as well as my co-host today, who is our organization's advisor. So、uh, we'll be right back after a short break with the section of Isho Politai. Isho, you should know.、Uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> Let it show. One song, what do you know? One song, you should know. 大家好，各位观众，一首大声说，一首 Let it show。Uh, so, like I said at the beginning, you know, this is our very first,、uh, our very last broadcast of the year. And but don't worry, in case you do want to keep hearing us,、uh, we do. We will be continuing this、uh, broadcast on YouTube.、Uh, so if you're interested,、uh, you can search our YouTube channel, which is E Show Let It Show,、uh, exactly how it's spelled. And yeah, we'll be continuing、uh, releasing new content there, probably every week as usual. So yeah, don't don't worry, we're not going anywhere.、Uh, so today, like I said, I do have a co. Host, so I'd like to introduce her.、Um, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Jane. I work in Isho University Office of International Affairs Office. Okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And besides Jane, I also have two very、uh, special guests, and maybe we'll be having some pop-up guests arrive.、Um, maybe he's、uh, he's stuck in traffic, so we don't know if he's showing up.、Um, but at least we have two very good guests today. So can you go ahead and introduce yourself、uh, first here? Hey, everyone. My name is Alfred, and currently a third-year student here.、Uh, here,、uh, studying here in Taiwan. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And next. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Peter. I'm from Japan, and I'm currently third year, same as Alfred beside me. And I'm a former member of Isho University International Student Union. 
Oh, all right, thank you. Thanks for coming mm-hmm. with us today. So um, our, like I said, I just I've been mentioning a lot. You know, it's the last program. It's very special, and the reason we're able to hold this program is because of ISU ISU, and so we all of us here in the studio are involved with ISU ISU in some yeah. way or yes. form. Even so, Mario mm-hmm. is also yeah, a even member, me. Right? Yeah, I've been a member right when I joined. Actually, I was um, kind of just recruited in right when I <laughs> just started as a freshman, and now in my second year, and now I'm, I hold the position as well. So yeah, it's been fun. Um, but yeah, can you go ahead and just sense our guests, like maybe our viewers have never heard of you guys. Uh, how exactly did you come to Taiwan? Oh, um, Why did you decide Taiwan, I guess, for to me, study here? Yeah, I'll for me, go first. Least, yeah. uh, okay, uh, I'll go first. Uh, way before coming to Taiwan, I've been studying Chinese for over 15 years. And oh, really? Fifteen? Fifteen, like 15? 15, yes. Oh, wow. It seems like it's going nowhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's child. going nowhere. Your yeah. child, Is yeah? it really common in Philippines that the Philippine students will learn Mandarin? Um, I think it depends on which background uh, yeah. each... You are Chinese yeah. heritage? Well, well, it doesn't look like... I mean, it don't look like one, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, a half of my family is from Chinese heritage. Oh, and, really? Oh. See. Yes, wow. and we actually decided to try... Well, my parents decided to enroll my whole family into a Chinese school which they also believe that it would be very beneficial for mm, us in the in future. The future yeah. which, do you speak Chinese at home? Um, no. No, your parents <laughs> don't speak Chinese. Too. Um, my grandpa used to speak Cantonese. Oh, yeah. interesting. But I don't think he's very interested in teaching us how to speak. <laughs> mm. So he'd rather speak in our local language with a very weird accent or uh, oh. English. Yes. And your local right. is Tagalog, right? Um, oh, no, no. Uh, actually, Philippines is, has at least 200 different languages oh, all wow. over. Right. Yes. And one, my language, my local dialect is Hiligaynon. It's so hard to pronounce, but it's yes. Hiligaynon. Yes. And it's top four in the Philippines right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also know how to speak the Visaya, a top two, and Tagalog as well. Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah, so going back to your Chinese, so you were interested oh, yes. in Chinese um, from the beginning? Yeah, uh, the reason why I tried to apply here in Taiwan is I... I I saw the potential of learning Chinese in in my daily uh, applying it in my daily lives and maybe using it in the future while applying for a job because mm. in the Philippines we a lot of businesses and companies are owned by Chinese um, families right. too and mm. it would bring great opportunities to me career-wise to have this kind of background and this kind of experience right. and also living in Taiwan it it it's also helped me give contrast and uh, opportunities to right. learn more and mm-hmm. to learn different backgrounds and cultures I see oh, mm-hmm. because like in Taiwan a lot of students they will go study abroad to l- improve their English right. yes. yeah. exactly. yeah. on the yes. contrast like international students they come to Taiwan mm-hmm. there's a side effect they can also improve their Mandarin and Chinese yes. yeah and it kind of just happens naturally like every day you're surrounded by the language like naturally you're just going yeah. to start like picking up the sentence structures exactly. and like Mm-hmm. I believe definitely learning a language, like the number one way, like you can study in school, like you said, for 15 years, yes. but the number one way is like immersion, I think. Immersion, like, yes, mm-hmm. and using it daily, I mm-hmm. guess. But yeah, you're here yeah. three years already, so uh, I bet you speak good Chinese now. Oh, I, I hope so, <laughs> I hope so, because if not, it's a uh, uh, waste of time, I guess, but I hope so. It's a big improvement, yeah. I, I, could say, I could say. I can tell, too, his Chinese has been improving a lot. Mm-hmm, good, but yeah. you're here three years already, Peter, so... <laughs> How about you, Peter? How about, How about your, your yeah. Chinese? What so made you decide so to process, come to Taiwan? Like oh, for me, yeah. it was... it was. How should I? It was like sudden. I when I was third year of senior high school, I had to choose, you know, university. Like I was thinking of studying, but I didn't know where I wanted to go in Japan. And I was kind of thinking that I want to, you know, try study abroad because mm-hmm. my grandmother was British. Mm-hmm. I mean, she is British, <laughs> so like she she speaks Japanese, but her she has like really strong accent, so. Mm-hmm she is more comfortable speaking in English. Mm-hmm. So, like, I wanted to improve my English and communicate with her in English in the future because in the back time, I really didn't speak English at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, in my school, there were a students from ISU came to my senior high school. Oh. Those students were studying in applied Japanese. So, it okay. was kind of like cultural exchange. They introduced 
ISU and like、oh. we welcomed them.、Mm-hmm. Like we had school festival together,、mm-hmm. we had lunch together. It was、oh. like lunch party.、Oh. Then our school was gonna send some students to Isho、oh. University for just it's, it was like a training member. So I go through the interview and I was actually chosen. Then、oh. I came here when I was 18.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a summer. Mm-hmm. Vacation of third year. Then, well, like when I saw the campus, and I i did talk with some professors, and actually, there was Dr. Tai Chi, u、mm-hmm. Mr. Tai Chi. Yeah, u yeah.、Oh. yeah, and I also met、mm-hmm. the president of Isho University as well. Then,、mm-hmm. I like immediately I thought, oh, I want to study here.、Mm-hmm. Oh, then I went back、great. to Japan and I told my father that I'm applying. Yeah, here. here. Yeah, here.、Wow. So、I remember when you first came, you were studying in Chinese language center. Oh, yeah.、Right? Yes,、oh, really? because you were enrolled in the. <laughs> so、really? yes. my, my friend told me that I need to s- learn Chinese, and of course, I want it. So <laughs> I came like three months earlier、oh, than the、okay. other students. So I came here like quite early.、Yes. So I went to Chinese center for three, three months. months. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ah, Then I, I started my degree here. Okay, because that、yeah. was my first impression. You were CLC students. Yes. <laughs> so at that point, did you have any Chinese language at all? Like, did you have any ability?、Like, no, I didn't, I didn't know anything. anything. And at that time, my English、oh. was really bad. So when t e a c h e r t e a c h me, of course, she translates into, into English. English <laughs> but then I don't know what she's talking about in English. <laughs>、really? So、wow. it was like, it was really hard. Like,、That's、I struggled、so、a lot. Interesting. Wow,、mm-hmm. because your English is quite good now. Like,、yeah. you're able to、It's、communicate、really、with us freely. So, how were you able to improve your English? Like, what's your program here at Isho? Is it. Like English taught? Yes,、yeah, so、I'm, I'm studying in a department called International Tourism and Hospitality.、Mm. So, yeah, order, you know, class and、uh, conversations are in, in English. So, I think that's how I improved. But also, you know, joining this organization,、mm-hmm. the International Student、yeah. Union. Helped me a lot、wow. to improve yeah, my English. I, I could tell because when I first met Peter, I, we usually communicate with him in Chinese because、oh. he no was way, a、really? CLC、really? student. Yes.、Oh, and、wow. then now I could see his differences. Now his English is so, so, so much better. Yeah. Yes,、yeah. a big、wow. difference. Thank you. Yeah. And then Mary,、yes. why why did you? You were also a student here. <laughs>、yeah. Why、yeah. did you come to Taiwan? Yeah, I have an interesting story too.、Um, I'm quite a bit older than my peers. I'm not going to say how old, but actually, <laughs> <laughs> but actually、uh, yeah, we're going to keep it a secret.、Um, actually, five years ago, coming now into six years ago, I was an exchange student to Taiwan in Taichung, and I lived here for one year. And at that time, I was just doing a gap year from high school to university.、Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't, want, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I'm just like, I'm just going to go somewhere. So、um, there's this international、um, organization called Rotary.、Um, Rotary. Rotary, Rotary. Rotary International, yeah. And they have a very special program called the Rotary Youth Exchange, RYE. And so I just, I just decided, why not? Like, my. Uh, at the time where I was living in America, they were sending students out to Taiwan.、Mm. So I just, I just tried. And so I got it. I came to Taiwan. I lived here for one, for one year. And in that time, I, my Chinese was kind of hi how. Like I, <laughs> <everyone, Hi-hao. laughs> yeah, like I could understand a lot, I could actually speak a lot. Um, I lived with four host families,、oh. and those host、oh. families only spoke Chinese. So at the beginning, I didn't study Chinese at all. It was a lot of like, Hand gestures,、yes. but then naturally I, I, had, I was forced to learn Chinese,、mm. so I learned it. But then when I went back to America, it was, I had no chance, so I lost it all.、Mm. So just after the years, like I, started, I went to university, I started working, and just how my life progressed, I, saw, like, I always had in the back of my mind, like, I do want to go back to Taiwan somehow.、Um, and yeah, it's just a, a point in my life where I thought, okay, like, now I need to finish my degree. Um, but my Chinese sucks, so I need to, an English program. So I literally just Google searched <laughs> <laughs> English、yeah. taught program in Taiwan and specifically、uh, tourism and hospitality. That's my major here. And yeah, Isho. Fortunately,、uh, fortunately our school came yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, very fortunately. There were two schools, and、um, I'm kind of a procrastinator. So that、yeah. means I, I leave think, things、too. at the last minute. And one school, their deadline had already closed, but Isho has a very late、mm-hmm. acceptance,、yeah. <laughs> acceptance deadline. So I'm like, okay, apply. And luckily, I got it. So that's how I'm here. I just, I, I love Taiwan from the beginning. And, you know, I, I wanted to improve my Chinese.、Um, 
And I think my understanding is really good, but my speaking, uh, it, I've only been here a year, so yeah. I have a better <laughs> yeah. excuse than you do. <laughs> so so that's right. my story. And yeah, um, so I'm just here. Yeah. You mentioned that you went here for ro Rotary, Rotary. Mm -hmm. Youth Exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister did it before as well, uh, really? for a wow. year. And we also handled host family. And she was Ooh. required to study German and oh, Swiss so German, German. Really? yeah, like uh, six months before coming mm -hmm. there. I'm curious, is did you also study Chinese no, before going to Taiwan? I didn't. No, they didn't have. I know some countries like Japan has mm -hmm. that requirement. Yes. France, I think, if you want to European go, you need countries. I guess you need that yes. language requirement already. Um, but Taiwan, I guess they're understanding that Chinese is very hard, yes. and so <laughs> yes. and so they did not give me that requirement. Uh, when I found out I was coming to Taiwan, of course I had the interest. So the only thing I did was I started watching Taiwanese dramas mm. <laughs> in the United States. In the United Whoa. States, yeah, I didn't on, on know Netflix. They are yeah, on there Netflix. Too. Yeah, every Netflix is very popular these days. So they had at that time they did have um, one you very still specific drama. Which I drama? do. Xing <laughs> Fu, wow. uh, Di Di Fu, or something like that. Uh, yeah, oh. Shai Yijian Xingfu. Yeah, that okay. one. Very old now. <laughs> Are you still watching it in, in, right now? Or? I already finished it. I finished it five oh. times already. Oh. I don't need to watch it again. <laughs> Do you watch any like Chinese soap opera or Taiwanese soap opera now? Um, these days, no. But before, like, and when I actually found out I was coming to Taiwan at Isho, I did start watching it again. I like the historical <laughs> the historical drama. <laughs> There's a very popular the one. Ancient, uh, the ancient one. The ancient one. Yeah. I like those yeah. And, so one, the, uh, and one more thing. I didn't, right now, I saw. I didn't know that Taiwan has different languages as well. Actually, oh, you mean I, I like thought Taiwanese it was or just uh, Mandarin? Oh. But when I went here, I was seeing Taiwanese. Yeah, Taiwanese. Same. I was, yeah. I was thinking the same. And even the soap operas is not mm -hmm. in yeah, Mandarin. Yeah, yeah. It's in actually in Thai or mm -hmm. Taiwanese. Yeah. And yeah. So when I was watching that, I drama, was trying to like, like, I understand. Was like, <laughs> nah, this is really different. This Most generally, you different. didn't watch a Taiwanese drama. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. I would have been really in even trouble. Even the modern ones right now. They all still oh, use really? uh, Thai. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially in Kaohsiung here. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Also, oh. most of the people here they they like to speak Taiwanese more than Mandarin. Oh. Oh, so it's a different in, like, in Taipei and. Uh, yeah, I think in Taipei because most of the people living there, their their um pa parents or their fathers, the generations are from mainland China, mm. oh, so they used to speak Mandarin. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I so that's why I was like, I was watching the TV and I was like, I really do not understand anything. This is maybe Japanese, but this is not Chinese. Like, oh, that's that's when I asked my friend, can you also understand? And she told me that, oh, it's actually Taiwanese uh, uh, local language mm. or mm. Taiyu. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's why. Because like, okay, I, if I didn't come, to, if I didn't do some research, maybe I would know some. You would have been confused. Yeah. Didn't, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, how's your Taiwanese now then? Oh, <laughs> nah, Not existent. Maybe like 10 words. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a lot. That's more than me. And, oh, well, back in the Philippines, we, in my school, we used to use Hokkien, which is oh, very similar Hokkien with. Hokkien is similar to Taiwanese. Taiwanese. Oh. For my first two years studying Chinese, we used Hokkien when I was oh. like five six years old seven years old but they changed it to mandarin ever since so uh, i forgot some words but i do know the numbers yes. mm. yeah <laughs> one two three yes. four <laughs> <laughs> oh mm. yeah no idea i didn't yes. know that was even a language interesting wow. hey, how about you peter how's how's your chinese like um jane mentioned that before you they used I to think speak she, with you with she returned everything to clc right <laughs> <laughs> you return all your, your knowledge with i mean chinese language i don't know like i i learned quite quickly because you know when i came here it was during the summer vacation so mm -hmm. there was not many international students here i'm oh. pretty sure that everyone was like going back so when i was here i was actually we live in a dorm with my friend. Mm. He's called Franz. Probably he showed up. Oh, in Israel yeah, yeah. From yeah. Indonesia. We were only two boys studying in Chinese language mm. center. Oh, yes. oh, wow. Then we lived together. He speaks much better Chinese, so he helped oh. me a lot. Then after I studied a degree, I mm -hmm. was joining the badminton team. Oh. And it was a school team, so everyone else was Taiwanese, first local yeah. students, Taiwanese yeah. students. Uh. So I had to, you know, speak communicate with them in Chinese so I think my Chinese was still getting better but then since I had some you know not problem but I <laughs> had a reason to quit the badminton team mm -hmm. and I kind of stopped speaking mm -hmm. so I, don't know, I think I'm forgetting 
But your, at least your reading is really well, I'd assume, oh. right? Since I mean, like, I can read like, almost everything because we oh, share the character. Yeah. So when oh, I see, okay. I, I, I do understand. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, speaking, speaking. and... <laughs> I think you have this writing. advantage that you could actually read, but right? you don't read. Though, yeah, I mean, for Japanese, it's easier mm-hmm. to learn Chinese than mm-hmm. English. Because mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's really similar. Share, yeah. mm-hmm. Wow, interesting. I think that's why I really like working in Isho University. Like students coming from so many different countries, mm-hmm. different that cultures kind of with their own backgrounds. Too, yeah. yeah, so it's really like a diverse campus and working environment. And that also gives me like good nutrition yeah. to for my personal development yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So when when did you take up your position at Isha? Was it as culturally diverse as it is now? or? Yeah. I think we have much, much more international students now. I started working here around 10 years ago. Wow. And at that time, I was responsible for students from Mongolia, oh. and then oh. specific probably Hong country. Kong and mainland China. Mm-hmm. And we had a big population of Malaysian students too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like the student international student organization we used to have um, is mainly dominated by Malaysian students because oh, they are like bilingual. Mm-hmm. So they, they can organize a lot of activities and communicate with school administration. Mm-hmm. But since we have a more and more diverse student popularity in the community, we thought, I think it's a good idea we need to, um, to start an organization uh, mm-hmm. equally mm-hmm. opening to all students from different countries and to have all their voices heard. Yeah. So we found it, uh, I started as ISR, International Student Representative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By that time, it was not even International Student Union oh. yet. Mm. So we set, oh. kind of set the rule, one student representative from one country mm-hmm. only. Mm-hmm. So we gather these students together Oh, at least once every month to see what's their feedback to mm-hmm. school and what's their interest to um, organize events. Right. And then later on, it became the organization yes. you are all yeah. in. Wow. So I think maybe later on, we will spend some time to talk about like, uh, how, yeah, how you guys get into yeah. this organization yeah. and your experience right. from this. Wow, yeah, we, we have a lot of things to talk about still. So uh, stay tuned, don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Isho, Let It Show, Ichi Dasheng Shuo. Uh, so welcome back, thank you. Uh, in the first half, uh, we really got to know our guests really well, you know, how they came into Taiwan exactly, their Chinese language journey. And we ended off the first half by saying exactly how ISU, ISU first started. Jane was mentioning how really at the beginning it was nothing, and now it's really turned into a really a great thing. Yeah. But before we continue, our very special guest has arrived from his traffic jam. So Finally. Uh, finally. Yay. So let's welcome Hi. him. Welcome. Scott. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Scott. My Chinese name is Li Dejia. You can call me Li or Scott, and I'm majoring in BA in ESO. BA means uh, business, business administration. administration. Mm. And senior grad student, and I'm the 2020 2021 ISR Taiwan and EB secretary as well. Oh, oh nice okay. introduction. Thank you so much. Finally, you're here. Uh, so, like I just said, you know, Jane left off the program by saying how uh, ISU ISU first started. And so, uh, continue yeah. on with that. Yeah, um, I was just saying that we have a student representative from one country, right? Mm-hmm. So Scott is actually the Taiwanese student representative because um, we don't want to just have a student organization uh, oh, mainly yeah. only for international yeah, students because yeah. mm-hmm. the majority of students at school is the Taiwanese, the yeah, local course, students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've always heard that the schools become two campuses, one for international students, mm, yeah. the other one for I- Taiwanese students. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thought one of the important missions ISU, ISU should do is trying to merge, to build up a, bri- a, a bridge right, a connection, yeah. for yes. yeah, connection for Taiwanese students and international students. Mm-hmm. So and I think it's also, actually we also, 
it's also very hard for Taiwanese to speak in English because their main uh, main language is language the program is taught in Chinese, Chinese as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so, you know, like stereotypically, yes. you know, they may be shy to use yeah. the English. So yeah. like really, Even like a mission. Even though they know how to speak yeah, English, yeah, maybe they, they do yeah. know, but you know, just the confidence level. Yes. So ISU ISU really strives to you know build the bridge so that we can have more interactions with them. Yeah. So Scott, like how how exactly did you join ISU ISU? Um, well, the story will start from last semester, and mm-hmm. which the times I was junior year, and I tried to join a group at ESO. Mm-hmm. So anything, just any. It's just for enrich my uh-huh. college experience. Yes, yes. yes. Did, you, yes. did you join any student club before, before this? Yes, that's oh. what I want to say. It's, I w- originally want to join a uh, English club. Which oh. you know, also oh, to in, practice your English. Yes, is which also in international campus mm-hmm. and but the uh, you know the COVID nineteen pandemic don't allow uh, the school policy don't oh. allow them to hold any event oh. at the time. Oh, no gatherings. oh yeah. I know the one you're talking about. Like they will gather together yes. and practice yes. English yes. after class, right? Yes. 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 Oh, I know that one. Oh. Then I met my ju- my BS junior Michael. Michael uh, you're Wu. Your senior, senior, right? Senior. Yeah. Her, yes, my senior, Michael Wu. And he, we have conversation about this. Then he suggests me that maybe I can try to join the ISU, ISU. Mm-hmm. But at the time, actually, I don't really understand this group. And even mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. hear about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. a Great big Taiwanese. problem I've noticed. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. even Nobody time, no one knows that. what yes. we are. <laughs> what we're thing. Yeah. So he just... And kind of like briefing about what is ISU, what they doing, and he have two years experience mm-hmm. in. Yes. Yeah, Michael is the former vice president. Yeah, and also the ISU of Taiwan. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. and but I, I still feel s- some hesitate about it because mm-hmm. oh. I am, I mean, I'm kind of like how to say that introler or introvert. I'm uh-huh. introler uh, most of the time. And so, but he just uh, keep push me to join <laughs> that. Michael <laughs> <laughs> is a different guy. Every yes. day, he <laughs> Every made day. me hey, uh, he, uh, you can come to join us. Because he was about to graduate, and he needed to find <laughs> someone <laughs> to <laughs> take his position. Maybe that's the Mary stuff. That's why yeah, he's on pressure. Him, okay, we miss him. <laughs> yes. Michael, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> if you listening? can hear that, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you. I really thank you, brother. Wow, interesting. After the conversation and he a lot of push me, I as as I think maybe I should accept it. Then, mm, then you try, yeah. Then, uh, yes, absolutely. We yeah. After also, Michael actually um, told Scott to join, yeah. tried to convince uh, Scott to join our organization. I'm the first one who yes. Michael uh, introduced oh. To, oh. from mm. Scott, and it was like, so was Alfred the first like international student you met. Like at Isha or no? Uh, mm, like I, before then, did you only interact with like your local, like Taiwanese. your classmates, Taiwanese? Mm. <gasps> wow, interesting. That's the first international student you actually yes, talked actually. to. Yes, yeah. actually. Oh. He went oh. over my room oh. and we talked about... Uh, in your room. <laughs> yeah, in my room because I used to stay <laughs> norm, yeah. norm, yes. <laughs> and Michael actually introduced Scott to me and it's like, are you sure you want Scott to be your ISI because um, I can see he's very shy. Mm. And Michael so, asked you that? He, uh, yeah, but oh. so far he is very into it. He's very... Dedicated, uh, yeah. Dedicated, yes. invested mm-hmm, totally. in joining our organization. Okay, and I told him, yeah, we could give it a try. And since that he's... Michael is also going to graduate at that time mm-hmm. and he also will graduate from his position as vice president. He, he needs someone to replace, replace his seat. <laughs> yes. 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 I think the fact that is we have some drink in your dorm room, oh, yes. right? Oh. So oh. maybe I just drunk no, at no, the no, time. No. I drink, like maybe juice, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Soft drinks. Yeah, soft drinks. <laughs> okay. Some drinks, yes. And so... Now we know when, if we want to get Scott doing something, <laughs> what should we prepare? Yeah, just soft, soft drinks. drinks. <laughs> Cola, Some very soft drinks, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting, so I wow. think like, it's kind of like 
Impulse buying. <laughs> impulse. <laughs> impulse. Yeah, impulse. Buying. Like he has no choice. <laughs> uh, I really sorry, thank you, but, yeah. but you don't regret it, right? Yeah. Right. Are you? Or are you? It? No, I didn't regret it. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, I'm scared. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> you saying this in front of them, or you mean it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that is> it. <laughs> no. Okay. I hope. Wow. Yeah, I hope you mean it. <laughs> okay. But I really thanks him to push me to join yeah. this group. Mm. Thank you, Michael. Is you can hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Michael. So so <laughs> so this is your actually are also your last year because you're also going yeah, to your fourth year. Yes. You said, yeah. yeah, and we are. I think in the studio, probably mm-hmm. Scott can find the next person to take his position. Yes, oh, Taiwanese. Wow. This is our producer, Elena. Elena. Yes. Say hi, Elena. Elena. 大家好,我是Elena,我是氣管的,但是我是大二而已。Okay, oh. so yeah, Elena young. actually has been uh, producing us, yes. this program for one year with us, and even though she was speaking in Chinese, Chinese but Chinese actually she could understand what mm-hmm. everyone else was talking, yeah. and she could speak in English, English very well. Yeah. So Scott, now you know what to buy <laughs> for Elena. Some soft, soft drink, drink yeah. right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah um, actually Elena has been with us for the whole year doing, yeah, yeah. helping yeah. us with broadcasting. It's a very great help uh, that she is able to share her talents to everyone, mm. everyone listening and also uh, to us here in Isho University International Student Union. It's a very great help. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you, I want Linda. to also let people know that actually Elena just won a Erasmus scholarship mm. exchange in Bulgaria area next mm-hmm. semester. Yeah. yeah, and I think her experience working with ISU ISU did uh, help a lot to mm, win the scholarship true. as well, and as well as Peter, right? So yes. two of them both won the scholarship. Congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations, you guys. And in our studio here, uh, we, we have also. another Taiwanese student from Isho University, too. She graduated just from our school. Yeah, freshly graduated yes. from Isho University. Yeah. Yeah. And now she works in my uh, office yes, as office well. Office of International Affairs and Handling International, actually handling in media team of mm-hmm. the, yeah. the marketing. Um, yeah. Yeah, marketing so, uh, do you want to say something, Iris? Iris. Introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Iris. Mm, I'm yeah. trying to use English. <laughs> you're, well, try, you're trying yeah. really well, yeah. Good job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Because <laughs> so, I remember <laughs> when Iris was still in uh, in college, when she was still a student, she um, took the internship program and went to the Philippines. Yes, right? oh, uh, actually wow. she went to my high school yes. twice, if I'm, if I'm sure. Twi- I'm correct, twice, right? Yeah, twice. Uh, mm. Yeah, I. she went for an internship and get to experience the Filipino cu- culture and how we actually do our our traditions and mm, our daily routine. Mm. Yeah, we yeah. also teach the uh, teacher how to make the video. Oh. Oh. Online teaching materials, right? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I remember Iris was just telling me the other day that the teacher from the Filipino high school, they felt that those um, skills they learned was very useful because of the COVID-19, and mm. they need yeah. to True. make online courses material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And those teachers are actually my real high school teachers. teachers. <laughs> yes, and I know them personally. What a small it's very world. nice. Yeah. 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 It just comes us. together. Yes. <laughs> okay. that, that's just as what I said. Like I, I like to work in this school because you see the environment here. Uh, just like today in the studio, we have three Taiwanese students and three international students, mm-hmm. and we all work together just like a f- big family. Yeah, it comes yeah. together yeah. somehow. And mm-hmm. actually, it's, um, it is a very good opportunity to discuss, uh, to talk, tell you guys that um, this uh, uh, group organization. organization has been running for a lot of years, maybe five years from now. Yeah, because right at the very beginning, uh, when we set the goal, we want to have international student representative. Uh, it was actually, yeah, a bit difficult because just as Scott mentioned, people don't understand what is this about mm-hmm. and why do we have to gather every month and what exactly the Are school want now? from us. us yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So at the very beginning, I, I call for the meetings and we try to get feedback from the students. And after years and years, Gradually, students 
tend to know and get to realize how an organization uh, an organization can benefit themselves yeah. mm -hmm. right, right so yeah. they started to take initiatives mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do Participate, something yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it hasn't been a very smooth ride uh, at first but eventually we get to try to find different solutions that could help us grow more and try to uh, influence more uh, people to experience a, a unique experience mm -hmm. yeah. coming to Taiwan. Yeah, like everyone in this room is involved in ICU ICU at mm -hmm. the core. You know, yes. we have the former president of the whole organization, Peter, the current president, Alfred. Yours truly, me. I am the vice, vice president. president, and Scott here. He's our executive secretary. So really, you know, we do have like the experiences of the smooth sailing, the hard times. So yes. how about yeah. you two? Can you tell us a specific time where you know the best time or What's a problem that you've noticed or that you experienced? Uh, yeah, uh, my difficulty was, uh, you know, communication because mm. we are from different countries, especially in our um, organization. Like we have a really a diverse environment, mm -hmm. and um, it was like it's different. How, for example, how I communicate with the you know people around me, we are kind of uh, indirect. We don't say a thing directly you like mean japanese we, yes culture, in japanese right? culture we tend to be like kind of indirect but we mean uh, it right i think right. chinese we people it. too indirect oh. yes but for example <laughs> i like i i don't say specifically Subtle. but you know there are countries like you know people speaks to the others like really directly straightforward yeah, straight yeah I, right. I sometimes got offended <laughs> I, was like, yeah, <laughs> I sometimes got offended like especially the first time i was like really surprised how people talk to each other because it was really different from <laughs> uh, culture right. shock how i used to do it cultural yeah. shock yeah mm -hmm. and i after becoming a president because i i did have a you know responsibility and I, I i had to take care of it i had to you know maintain everything going on within the organization and mm -hmm. like communicating with for example vice presidents mm -hmm. yeah i i i always try to be you know direct yeah not direct <laughs> but Try not to, you know, how offend. should I say? Yeah, yeah. offend, offend them. Mm. Like, yeah. And so it takes, it's like being in a position like this where you really like, you know, you're tested on how open-minded you are, learning to become more open-minded. Mm, yeah, And yeah, just like yeah. learning to communicate. I think my personality has changed. Oh. I, I, yeah, didn't, I, I, could I tell. didn't like talking to foreigners because I, again and again, but uh, in our culture, we don't, like we are really shy, oh, yeah, okay. to talk to the, yeah. the foreigner. Because so. I remember when Peter just came to school, he was um, a freshman, and then mm -hmm. invited to become a vice president for membership. Yes, I remember the way he was talking, and compared to how he is talking oh, now, really? way interesting. Different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's not definitely not Japanese style now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> not Japanese. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. How about you, Alfred? What's uh, your actually? When I first started in international here in International Student Union, it was also uh, Eugene, my former uh, uh, colleague, yes, a su yeah. student representative of Philippines, helped me join this organization, mm -hmm. and he was one of the main authors of our bylaws with yeah. together yeah, with yeah. because jo Eugene is a PhD yeah, student and PhD he had student. some experience to running organization, yeah, multiple yeah. experiences as well. And at first, I have no idea what I'm going through or what I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just excited to join, and after that, I think. I try to compare those times the organization having the bylaws and having it don't, doesn't have the by, uh, bylaws and it it seems that it greatly helps the whole organization's yeah. structure and yeah, how yeah. it would look like yeah. and and each position's um, job descriptions and it helps uh, keep maintain the peace for mm -hmm. everyone yes. within the within all the members mm -hmm. and uh, and. Peter said that communication has always always been a mm -hmm. big problem. I Even think not way just, before this yeah, organization yeah. was established. And I think it's not just um, present in this organization, but present in everywhere else, uh, yeah. different yeah, organizations. In yes. all the communities, actually. But mm -hmm. what we're dealing with here is uh, a bit unique uh, in a sense that 
we collaborate with different nationalities and right now we have over 40s nationalities that we need to actually um, change our approach to each and every mm-hmm. one of them to yeah. avoid um, insult yeah mm-hmm. conflicts or insulting them as well even though we don't really mean to yeah or of course it's, not. Never, it's always with good intentions yeah it's never our intentions never and I know that everyone joining in this organization has good intentions I, mm. I know that one mm. uh, but uh, but since we're all coming from a different backgrounds and different cultures we tend to forget that uh, we, everyone is different and one thing that what could we do we could do is probably try to reflect ourselves and what maybe mm-hmm. think that maybe it's also our fault or maybe it was my fault and uh, try Just to build my yeah, yeah. accepting mm-hmm. and try to build more um, knowledge and experiences and so in the future it wouldn't really repeat it by itself yes mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so how about you Mary so far everything's good yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, actually, here at Isha, I'm. I think, uh, to my knowledge, I'm the only American on campus. Um, maybe at the medical camp. You know, Isha is divided into main campus and medical campus. I think I'm the only American. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of kind of typical American where I'm very direct. And so again, I've also had to like be open minded and mm. learn how to interact with the Asian cultures that I've never experienced before. Uh, so it's been a fun ride. It's been a really uh, amazing journey here. And we're happy here. Uh, we were able to express all of our experiences and show our students diversity here on this program. So I think our time is up um, almost. So, yeah. 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 I, I hope that maybe we have more time to um, share with people of our story. Mm-hmm. So yes. if you're interested in getting more stories of uh, Israel University and International Student Union, stay tuned with us on YouTube. Just mm-hmm. type in E show, let it show, and then we will see you there. Yeah, yeah so we don't, we'll be, we're still here, so. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. miss it, yeah? Don't miss <laughs> it, yeah, all right. So I guess, can we say one final goodbye together? Or yeah, sure. Happy right. New Year? Or <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy, Happy New Year, yeah. everyone. Happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah, how about in our languages? Japanese, go. E show, show, by, ke. Ishopedia. Hello and welcome to Isho Shao Bai Ke, Ishopedia. Today we will be learning about words and phrases from the language of Palawan, from the Pacific Island nation of Palau, southeast of Taiwan. Our first phrase is hello. Ali, Ali. Our next phrase is, how are you? Gomwangarang. In response to that, you can say, I'm good, I'm fine. Akmasisi, aktaichop. Akmasisi, aktaichop. Our next phrase or question is, what is your name? Anklem. The Anklem. In response to that, you can you will say, My name is Anklega Boisep. Anklega Andrew. <laughs> Our last phrase is Goodbye. See you next time. Me igung bong ma next. Me igung bong ma next. So with with Palawan, uh, our 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 language is based. We have our own language, but we also borrow words from other languages, uh, most especially Japanese, and also um, from Filipino dialects and also Spanish. So for hello or Ali, it, everyone uses it. Yeah, that's a more general um, usage. It can be said to anyone, not so much restriction, age, gender, whatever. It's yeah, you can just use it to say hello to anybody you encounter. Mm. It's very common if you just if you're just visiting a relative or a friend, just say Ali. And the next phrase, which is Gomwangara, uh is also commonly used. Um, but you. Uh, because we also borrow words from Japanese, 
we can also say gom daijob based off the japanese word daijobu mm. Yeah, right. and uh, it's and it's immediately followed by the word Ali because you say hello and then you're basically asking how are you yeah. following soon. And then in response to that, you can say you can after they ask you how are you, you can say akmasisi. But in Palawan, that's not. It's more formal, so you you can you can also switch to the common form, which is akdaicho. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, the masisi is like it's a more. Uh, it's less commonly used. Uh, it was more common like before. So, yeah. It's more common with the elderly. So you can exactly. you can say it with them. And then for the next phrase, what is your name? Everyone uses that. The uh, anklem. So, yes, every everyone uses that as well. Yeah. It's more common when you first meet a person. Yeah. And, um, and then I guess in our culture kind of thing, it's like we... Uh, we will bring, like, for example, as a guest, and then we're sort of introducing you, and the person would ask the that question to you, and either he expects uh, your response or our response. And then in response to that, you can say, and uh, for Jamal, he has a uh, Palawan name, so he says, yeah. Yes. Uh, and even if you don't have a Palawan name, you can just say, Andrew. Mm-hmm. And for the last one, when you say goodbye, meigung uh, is also meigung is also very formal. Yeah, but people can just say kabong or megong, which, right? Yeah, it's just the same applies. Yeah, and then as you mentioned before, it's one of those words that's more common if you use it for the elderly or like. The more older generation would use it like more often compared to. Mm-hmm. So and for the other phrase, "gabong ma next," uh, means "see you next time," and as you can see, we also put "next," which is an English, a borrowed English word, and we just put it at the end of the sentence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's more commonly used these days with the younger generations, especially because in Palau, a lot of uh, our our people also speak English. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, uh, thank you, Jamal, for the help uh, today with this. Um, and Gabong my next. Okay. Gabong my next, Andrew. It was fun coming on the air to uh, talk a little more about Palawan language. Yes. Okay. I'm also Mexican, so Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. All right, thank you. All right, see you. Open your mind. Chau, ai, chau, yu, dien, tai.